What's up guys, Dreamcast Guy here for Book Review Saturday. This Saturday we're reviewing 112263 by Stephen King. It's kind of a time travel historical fiction novel about an English teacher named J. Epping trying to stop the assassination of JFK. This was suggested by one of the subscribers after uh, I read the Dr. Sleep and did that review and you were right, subscriber. Um, I really like it. It's almost hard to review this. I've actually filmed this about five times now because it is so, like, it's hard to talk about it because it's so spoiler heavy. Basically, the first 50 pages is he's grading a paper from uh, one of his GED students, and his GED student writes a story about when his father came home when he was eight years old and killed his whole family with a hammer and beat him up a little bit so he's a little bit slow. So when he discovers this portal that goes back to 1958, he wants to do that. He's like, all right, well, I'm going to stop that guy from murdering his whole family, if nothing else. So basically he does that. And then upon that, he starts to come up across the realization, well, if I can stop that, if I can stop one child's like horrific event, then I can stop the horrific event of a death of a president, which theoretically led to Vietnam and um, MLK being shot and everything else. So it's very interesting. It's very historical fiction-y, though, just because he spins the whole novel. He, he The portal only drops out in the summer of 1958. You can't turn it on a dial. You literally, you go into the summer of 1958, or you go fucking nowhere. So, he goes into the summer of 1958, so he has to live in that time period for five years till he can get to 1963. Uh, it's written very much like a John Irving novel. It has a lot of mystery type elements and I really like that where a lot of times he is having to like shadow and, and watch these people with just massive general foreknowledge. He knows where they're going to be all these major dates but he doesn't know where they're going to be in between. The way it writes about Lee Harvey Oswald almost gave me the chills because you are seeing a guy who defected from America and went and live, lives in Russia for all this time and is living there and finds a wife and everything and then manages to redefect, which is just fucking impossibly difficult, especially in that time period, to come back to America. And now he's trying to defect to Cuba and just all this crazy stuff. So we're getting to see everything that Lee Harvey Oswald did. You just realize that, like, I'm, I'm 27. Lee Harvey Oswald shot Kennedy before he was even 24. I think he shot him when he was 22. It's like, I can't even imagine five years ago in my life if I had shot the president and then six days later been shot by Jack Ruby in a parking garage. This is just, it's good. I'm not meaning to ramble. Um, the one thing I will warn you is it is long. It is 850 pages. I don't know if that was really necessary, Stephen King. What's really fun is about each of the latest Stephen King books, because I've just been reading so many Stephen Kings lately and watching Stephen King DVDs. Oh, God, I'm getting obsessed with Stephen King. Anyways, is each Stephen King book seems to serve some purpose for getting, like, his own personal struggles out. Like, he writes about the... In The Shining, he wrote The Shining to get out his own feelings of animosity of being a young father and just being filled with all this like alcoholic rage and just being like, why? Why does this whole world, why do I have to deal with these kids? Why can't I just write and be at peace? And so that's why he got that out by having a struggling writer who kind of hates his children and actually breaks their arm and stuff. And so in this one, Stephen King was actually an English teacher for a while. And so it really feels like this is the struggles he had as an English teacher where you're making these small differences in lives, but in the grand scheme of things, you're still just another drop in the river of time. So, very interesting. Uh, it was really interesting to me, as somebody who lives in, Tex or in Dallas, Dallas, Texas, but it all, he treats Dallas like it's the worst little shithole. I, I want to say to anybody who uh, reads this and has never been to Dallas, Dallas is amazing. I've been around the country some, but... I love Dallas. I've never, ever wanted to move away here. Maybe that's just because I was born here and spent so many years here, but don't judge Dallas on this book. All right, that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to accidentally reveal any major plot, but this has been Dreamcast Guy. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and as always, keep dreaming.